our climate crisis is dictated by negative and positive feedback loops. Positive feedback loops make bad things worse and good things better. Negative feedback loops naturally return systems to equilibrium. As humans have burned fossil fuels, we have removed our planet's ability to self-regulate through negative feedback loops and set up a climate crisis as a runaway train destined to crash through positive feedback loops. For instance, as the planet warms, Arctic ice melts, which reduces the amount of energy reflected off the ice which means that more heat stays on the planet, which makes it hotter, which speeds up the ice melting, and on and on. It's like compound interest, except that it's killing us. This is driven by the relationship between companies' growth and their impact on the planet. As companies get bigger, they make climate change worse. I am the CEO of a company building a radically different business model one that we believe can be replicated across sectors to address climate change at scale. But before I tell you more about what we do at Cambium Carbon, we have to start with the status quo. I'm gonna walk through five distinct business models and their associated impacts on the environment, or the fifth generation framework as we call it. In most companies, growth is inversely related to impact on our climate. This means that the bigger a company gets, the more harmful it is to our planet. Generation zero, the baseline case, is the problem. The red line shows company growth getting bigger and bigger over time. The blue line shows the impact on our climate, progressing at the same speed, getting worse and worse. Cumulatively, the lifetime impact on our climate is horrible. Some companies accumulate wealth at a huge cost to society and the planet and then give a small percentage of that back. This is the first generation company, also known as the charity model. Charity might make us feel good, but taken as a whole, this model does much more harm than good. The second generation companies are those that do less bad. These companies weaken the perverse relationship between growth and impact on the planet Think of companies that power their operations fully with renewable energy or plant a seedling with every product you buy. These are good things, but they're not enough. The inverse relationship between growth and impact on the planet still remains in place, and the overall impact is still really harmful. Some companies have even worked their way into third generation, carbon neutral, committing across their emissions portfolio to achieve carbon neutrality. This means decarbonizing their operations and supply chains, and then supporting climate mitigation activities outside their business to compensate for their remaining impact. In other words, third generation companies decouple growth from impact. Globally, this model needs to quickly become the new baseline. But we should ask ourselves, is this good enough? When a company finally reaches carbon neutral, that means that its net impact on the planet is, on balance, neither negative nor positive, and that is nowhere near good enough. We need fourth generation, actually good companies. Companies that align growth with impact. The more they grow, the bigger the positive impact on the climate. As you can see, a positive relationship where growth means good leads to our first cumulatively good impact. This is huge. This means that as companies grow, their positive impact gets bigger and bigger. This means that over time, what they are building is cumulatively good for the world. Remember, this is not just about having one product or brand message that is positive. It's about winning across the entire company and being cumulatively good. We should be really excited about this. At Cambium Carbon, we are building a fourth generation, actually good company in the wood product sector, but we believe this model can be scaled more broadly. We start with a wasted resource. We divert that waste, turn it into value for our customers and reinvest revenues in natural resources. Our first product is urban wood. We are creating an entirely new value chain that diverts naturally fallen city trees 
These are trees that are coming down due to old age, storms, or planned removals. And we help save those trees from burn piles and landfills and turn them into beautiful furniture, flooring, and dimensional lumber. Every time our company makes a sale, we create a positive impact for the planet. Every time we take an urban tree into our reuse ecosystem, we keep waste out of the landfill and greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere. Every time we work with local suppliers, we create new jobs and avoid more emissions intense supply chains from traditional wood products. Every time we deliver an urban wood product to a customer, we take the pressure off of our national forest. And every time we take a payment from a customer, we significantly reinvest in urban forests to keep people in our communities happy and healthy. For us, value creation and positive impact go hand in hand. And we're just getting started. The scale of this opportunity is bigger than you might think. In 2020, the nation's largest lumber company harvested 32 million tons of wood from forests. Each year, there are 46 million tons of wood that fall naturally in our cities. Instead of wasting that wood, we can unlock a huge, hyper-sustainable source of material to be used across the world. Creating this new value chain from scratch isn't easy. And we're competing with a conventional value chain for wood products that has optimized natural resource extraction and mass production. But we're going to win. We don't have to own or manage land. Our source material is free and it's co-located with our production capacity and our customers. We're creating a technology platform to obtain similar process efficiencies across an ecosystem of small scale and local arborists, millers, artisans, and local manufacturers. And we've got social capital. Everywhere we turn, we run into communities, craftspeople, city officials, and furniture and architectural firms who want to help, who want to play a role in this creation of a new and better vision. Best of all, our products have more character. We're giving our customers something that they can talk about and that they love. Imagine eating dinner every night with your family on a table made from a tree from the backyard of your childhood home that you grew up climbing in or having a photo of your parents framed by the tree that saw them get married. There's a story, a history, a soul in every product. And we are proud of what we are building as a fourth generation company, but it's still not good enough. Because remember those positive feedback loops that power the runaway train exacerbating climate change? They make all of this harder and to win we need to match our opponent with the same kind of exponential power. Right now, when you release CO2 into the atmosphere by driving your car or buying a product, the planet experiences warming not only as a direct result of the molecules you emit, but also from the positive feedback loops that are created. There is additional warming contributed from the loss of sea ice, reflecting less energy, from melting permafrost releasing more methane, and from countless other harmful feedback loops. Our challenge is to get to fifth generation. Fifth generation companies are exponentially good. These companies contribute positive impact as they grow and in a way that compounds beyond their initial impact. Over time, changing the world. This decouples the relationship between impact on the planet and company growth, but in a way that creates exponentially good impact. Cumulatively, these types of solutions can combat climate change at much greater scale. Better business models can't just be circles. They have to be flywheels, spinning off value beyond just replacing where they started. We need fifth generation companies that employ the same tactics that have led to fast growing tech companies, but in a way that saves the world. At Cambium Carbon, we don't pretend to have solved the fifth generation equation, but we know that we need to. And here's what we're doing to create self-replicating positive climate impacts at each stage of our business. When a tree falls, it's turned into its best use 
not sitting in a landfill or off gassing. The positive, positive feedback loop here is also investing in and making it easier for other companies and cities to do the same. When that tree is turned into product, it creates local jobs and builds the local economy, displacing emissions intense supply chains. We create positive, positive feedback loops here by developing technology and market demand that enables other businesses to accelerate and measure this fifth generation framework. We reinvest a percentage of profits into community tree planting, where we are creating positive, positive feedback loops. And we focus our investments not on one-to-one -one dollars for trees, but on investments that enable local organizations to grow, leading to exponentially more tree planting over time. Those elements embed the impact flywheel into the core of our model, but we have a lot more work to do to truly create the scalable domino effects that we want to see. Beyond cambium carbon, the climate tech industry also needs to double down on these types of scalable solutions. We need investors to invest in companies that are creating positive, positive feedback loops and have the ambition to really do that. We need entrepreneurs to commit to building companies that provide exponential impact for both people and the planet. We need customers, every single one of us, to demand products that are unequivocally good, not just convenient. We need regulators and policymakers to incentivize climate change mitigation, making these solutions increasingly viable. And we need existing companies to realize that achieving carbon neutrality is just fine, and instead push to be as innovative as this challenge demands. We need carbon neutrality to be the minimum expectation. We need truly net positive companies to become the norm, and we need fifth generation positive, positive businesses to become the leaders. Imagine a world where successful companies do not exist without being socially and environmentally impactful. There's a lot we need to figure out in order to build a fifth generation business, but if we can get it right, we will at least be fighting climate change with an exponential impact of our own. Thank you.